to invite everybody, take your pen, take your notebook. This is restoration show that will bless your life. It's a talk show that we get opportunity to ask questions, get opportunity to, you know, learn the word of God in depth and then learn a lot of things. My name is Pastor Matthew. I am at Restoration City Church and I have with me here our minister. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am Minister Claudia. Amen. And we're here with our bishop, Bishop James Osborne Nanjo. Thank you. And we're here to discuss, the topic we are discussing today is the master the art of choice making. Every day we make choices in life. But we are focusing on mastering the choices that we make daily. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Minister. And we have our bishop with us. In the last few weeks, he has been taking us through this wonderful journey about choices and his blessing lives. It's amazing. And this morning was another, I've never heard some of the things he said in the word. Ma mastering your choices or choice master. Choice master. I was thinking about, you know, a master somewhere that will come and, you know, but he had put in the tools in our hands to be able to master choices. And Bishop, we have a few questions here to ask you. Thank before you. Before that, we want to welcome you. We want to say we really appreciate you, sir, for your time, for everything, and for the words that keeps flowing out of your belly to bless many lives. We really appreciate you, sir. Thank you. It's my Thank pleasure. You. It's Amen. my pleasure. Amen. And for everyone that is watching, I want you to use your phone. It's the most powerful tool you have. Mm. Spread the news, share, tell somebody, bring them all on. You will get something here that will escalate your blessings eternally. Thank you for having me. Amen. Thank you, sir. I have, I have a question. Um, when we, we start, you started teaching us, you said something that our world is full of choices. Yeah. And it's a world of choice. And before one can make good choices, they must master it. Is it okay to elaborate more on that, please? Yes. Yeah. I, I did um, pointed us to about five or six things yes, sir. that you have to focus and be doing to become a master in the art mm -hmm. of making choices. It's not just about making choices. I've been teaching about choices for some weeks now. But the whole focus of um, our deliberations today was about how to have a grip on the choices you make because every choice we make, we take responsibility as part of how to master choices. The choices we make will make us better or bitter. Mm -hmm. So for it to be better, for it to be good, for it to be great, for the outcome to be our expectation, our uttermost desire, we need to continually master the art of choice making as though it's a skill. There are some skills that everybody must have. And I think one of the skills that should be common to all of us should be how to master choice making. Because you know, every day we're making choices, good or bad, evil, um, for prosperity or for poverty. But for us and for anyone watching, I know we want to make choices that bring increase, that bring progress, that bring abundance, laughter, joy, celebration, excitement. And if that is going to be the order of your life, you must master the skill or the art of choice making. I think that is what I meant. And if we progress, um, we may be looking at how that can be done. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Thank you. Like you said, Bishop, every day we make choices in life. But why is it important that the choices we make in life must be guided by the Holy Spirit? Wow. That is very powerful because everybody makes choices, both the saved and the unsaved. So this is a very powerful area. When you go back, back to some of the teachings we had made, we had said the Holy Spirit is the central theme in every choice we make is our teacher, our guide, our leader, our counselor, 
and he, he teaches us, he helps us. So he's the number one area we can miss out on. But why do we need him? Because we are tempted to be in the flesh. We are tempted to do things with, with, with how do I put it, logical outcomes. But we want things that have the approval and the seal of God on it. So let me put it this way. There are many things that God has ordained for your life, for my life, for your lifetime, for your journey on earth. When you become a child of God, you want to operate by the blueprint. You know, we had talked about the blueprint at the beginning of this teaching. We spoke about the blueprint. So the blueprint is guided by the Holy Spirit, the covenant plan, pre-established, pre-ordained by God, guided, shielded by the Holy Spirit. So in mastering choices, you need the master himself, the palakletos, the Holy Spirit. If he is not in it, you can't master the art of choice making. Yes, so we need him. Hallelujah, glory to Thank God. Thank you. For a Christian perspective, mm -hmm. they would understand the importance of co incorporating the Holy Spirit in choice making. Yeah. But for an unbeliever, make choice and in their eyes they see success. Mm -hmm. How would you advise a successful businessman or entrepreneur or somebody successfully in their area of work when they think they are successful, yeah. but in reality they are in the line of failing? How would you advise someone to incorporate the Holy Spirit? Definitions of words are very, very powerful and very important. So choice making, put it this way, all human beings make choices. Whether Christian or Christian, any religion, people make choices. But it will amaze you to know that success, what an unsafe person see to be success is totally not truth in the sense of what a safe person sees to be success. When you read the scriptures in Joshua chapter 1 from the verse number 8 and 9, when God began to speak to Joshua when he's taking over the reins of Israel, and he taught him, you know, what success was. And the outcome was if you will read God's word and, 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 and meditate the word of God and keep it in your heart and not depart from the word of God, your way should be successful. So we realize that the art of meditation is a producer of true success ordained by God. And so when it comes to choice making, for you, the Christian, you have to be careful you are not tempted by every material and everything you see out there. We now live in a day where the whole push for success and the definition, what it means in the society and the world we live in doesn't have the God kind of success in there. It must be driven by the word of God, driven by the spirit of God. It must be driven by God's purpose for your life and generation. It must be driven by God's plan for your life. So true success is Jesus Christ. True success is through the doors of salvation. True success is through the joy of the Holy Spirit. True success is through the integrity and the credibility of the word of God. And so it's amazing to know every other success, businessman succeed, um, any other thing people are succeeding in, we don't say it's wrong, but the success that we can vouch for, the success that we know is God-oriented, spirit-oriented, kingdom-oriented, is the one that is Holy Spirit-inspired, the God kind of success. That is where we Christians must draw the line. We can learn from everyone in a world where we have common needs. We eat, we drink, we wear clothes, we drive cars and everything. But we have to be careful of the success status, right? Whereas there is a thin line between success from the world's view and success from kingdom view. Some things are the same, but still there's a thin line. I can put it that way. Hallelujah. Yes. Bishop, I've got so many questions ah. about choices. <laughs> Please bear with me, sir. 
I'm here. Um, mm. There are times when yes. choices are made uh -huh. on behalf of you, yeah. even without your knowledge. Yes. But there are times also when you have to take responsible. Yes. You have to be responsible yes. for the choices that you have yes. made. There are many times we see choices that have been made without our knowledge. Yes. Choices that we don't have a control over. Mm. And it grew or grow to affect you yeah. later in life. Yeah. Some of them you try to change it, but unfortunately, it is not humanly possible yeah. to change it. Yeah. How would you encourage one yeah. to continue to fulfill the desire yeah. of such choices yeah. that was made against their choice, against their will, I don't know if I'm putting the question straight you, you, to you. You're sir. right. You're right. And that is the kind of world we are faced in. Like, you can't change the family you were born into. You can't change who your mother is. You can't change who your father is. You can't change who your sister is. You can't change who your brother is. <laughs> it's a serious issue. David was born into a family like that. His brothers hated him. They didn't like him. At a point, his father relegated him to the forest. I did some work that I finished yesterday and I began to look at the painful experience and journey of David, King David. He was doubted, he was ostracized, relegated to the background, abandoned, emotionally brutalized. David suffered a lot. He was left with the beasts of the wilderness to be destroyed. And that is what it was. He couldn't change the fact that Jesse was his father, no mention of his mother, his brothers were very hostile to him, but that is life. Um, you see the man called Joseph, he went through mountain highs and valley lows and he suffered. These people had mental issues. <laughs> Joseph, I believe, had mental problems. <laughs> You know, it's, 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 if you study biblical mental health, it's a, it's a serious issue when you start looking into it. He couldn't change who his brothers were. <laughs> he couldn't. And these guys wanted to kill him, and they wanted to pour his blood. They had very wild, dangerous plans against him. And that is what it was. He couldn't change who his brothers were. They are his brothers. That is what it is. Some things cannot be changed. But choices can always change. Sometimes don't focus on who and what you must change. Focus on the choices you must make. If we focus too much on things that cannot be shifted, things we can change, things that are going to be the same way, our lives cannot grow into the destiny ordained for us. So instead of me focusing on what I can push, what I can shift, I can make change, I mean choices. So that my responsibility, like uh, David, he had to make choices that would bring him to the throne. He didn't have to look at his brothers. You're a small boy, you're a naughty guy, you're arrogant. Why did you come here to be part of this battle? You are too small, you can't deal with Goliath. You know, but he had to make choices that this uncircumcised Philistine, I can bring him down. So you don't fight people that are fighting you. Make choices and fight into your destiny. So it's true, and, and sometimes, couple with what I have said, people get trapped, and they want to correct everything, make things work, and push things. Your own personal life, sometimes there are things you can't change, but you can make choices that can make your life better, and then bigger than what you couldn't change. So... It's a mystery and it's sweet to know that we all have the miracle power of choices and also to master the art of choice making to begin to integrate our lives into realms that we're never close to. That is the restoration story. It happened to David. It happened to Joseph. Gideon. It happened to Gideon. Mighty man of Valois. Don't call me mighty man. Look at my father's house. Look at my family. We are broke. We are sick people. We are down. We are single. We are going nowhere. We've been abandoned. But soon, 
He's leading a massive army. Soon, he's a judge of Israel. The same man, choices, choices, choices. You can choose to allow your life to be what your family told you, what your friend, somebody told you. You can also make a choice. That, that is the picture, but I want to change my future. Your picture doesn't always determine your future. Make a choice to change that picture. And your future is a reality. And I think, yeah, we can put it from there. It's a hope-building life. And choice inspires hope. Choices grow hope. It's the soil upon which hope, faith, everything begins to grow. Yes, sir. No, thank you so much. Thank sir. you. Adding to what um, our sister just said, our yeah. sister just said, um, just want we, as a church, Restoration City Church, we are a church that prays. We yeah. believe in prayer. Mm. And you have written countless books about prayer. And yes, I sir. More are on the way coming. Oh, yes. Talk about um, it. This uh, morning, you said something and I had to stop writing and look at you. I said, Is it the same man? Mm. And um, my question is. Can you replace choices with prayer? Because you said something like that. You can't That's, replace yeah. choice with prayer, but prayer predicate on choices. Mm. You can't pray if you've not made a choice. Prayer is proof that you've made a choice, but some make wrong choice and pray over it. So make sure the choice is right before you start praying. So what if it's um, Lamentation 5 verse 7, it says our fathers have sinned and they are no more and we now are carrying the iniquities. So what if it's something like that, sir? So that is a different ball game altogether. Yeah. That comes back to the question she asked. But if you come to the aspect of prayer, so that is talking about generational choices without your commitment, without your being part of it, but you have to handle the consequences of that. You didn't create it, you came to meet it. That is different. But when it comes to prayer and then choices, it's vital. We come back to begin to re-educate the body of Christ because most of what we call prayer meetings is choice zero. That's not prayer meeting. The reason of much of the unbelief in prayer, you know, many believers don't believe in prayer. They pray, but they don't believe in prayer. Many prayer ministries, if we could work on choices, the explosion would be massive. It would be it to be beyond what we ever thought. We need to come back to the school of choices, re-educate the body of Christ. It's not wrong to make a choice to prosper. It's not wrong to make a choice to marry. It's not wrong to make a choice to be healthy. It's not wrong. You see, you can be praying for healing, but if not make a choice to live healthy. Now, you can pray for healing, but the choice to live healthy is you work on your diet, right? right? You work on habits. You work on some your daily uh, behavior. That is choices you make. It's choices that you make. Now, you can be praying and you've not made any choice. So bad choices, right prayer, no answer. Bad choices, right prayer, wrong answer. Bad choices, wrong prayer, you don't like the outcome. What is wrong? Is your prayer wrong? Is prayer bad? No. You, have, you are here to make the right choice. Now, when your choices is consistent with the prayer, faith explodes. So, you have faith, wrong choices. Now, a lady that wants to marry, you want to marry an unbeliever, but you have faith to marry, faith, and you are praying. You don't have a problem with that, but you have made a wrong choice. Your prayer may be answered, but it's a wrong choice. So, we need to come back and rearrange the psychology of the saints. The prayer is not just the thing we use to do everything. There are gaps that must be filled and it runs through the lines of scripture from the Ten Commandments, from the days of Moses. If you do this, you do that. You do this, you do that. You call upon me, I will answer. So there, there are requirements, requirements. But basically, when you master the art of choice making, for instance, when you look at Matthew 25, I had mentioned that 14 going about the rich man that was traveling, called his servants, and he gave them talents. 
He gave them talents. He gave them talents. Now, they could have just go praying, 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 praying. Father, help me. Father, help me. It's good. But somebody had to make a choice. I will invest. The ones you hit it with prayer, the investment to be Holy Ghost inspired investment. Explosion begins. So, prayer can never be replaced. It is the key, it's the deal, it is the tool, it's the most powerful altar we have. But I can tell you one thing, if you appropriate that without choices, you'll be the most depressed person. Many prayer warriors are depressed. Many praying people are not happy. That is why suddenly, believers that are part of the covenant of prayer and the supernatural are beginning to digress. They get discouraged and they give up and they are like, I've prayed for many years. I have seen nothing. No, you prayed many years, you never made right choices for many years. Sir, does this ring a bell? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So how can, um, sorry, how can favor be a choice? Favor. Favor. That is when it is merited. Merited. So unmerited favor is not a choice. Merited favor is a choice. Please um, explain. Unmerited how, how favor does it work? is yeah. what God does for you. You did nothing. It comes to you. God giving. God ordained for you. Grace, you don't have to do anything. Then there is merited favor. You know, there's a way I can talk to you and I will have your favor. There's a way I can honor you and I will have your favor. People don't just do things. People act on the premises of what stirs them. Favor can be merited. You can see two children, give one 20 pounds and give one five pounds. It's favor. Mm. At the bottom of it, there is something that is clicking. One has favor than the other. Okay. In fact, you can give one 20 and give one zero. Favor. See, this child, he is very respectful. I like the way he's very respectful. You give him 30 pounds. The other one, you don't hate them, but nothing. Maybe you have your own reasons, but merited favor. Merited favor. Merited favor. So you can make the choice of things like honoring people, loving people, caring for people, being kind to people, right choices of words of affirmation, being genuine in your integration of how you connect with people, and that can buy you favor. You can buy favor. Mm. You can buy favor. You can buy favor. So if that rings a bell, everybody go out there, make a choice that you're going to walk into merited favor. <laughs> that means you are not waiting for God to, your time to come. Merit. You are going for your time. Make a choice to be Make a choice to be favored. Mm. Make a choice. Like, make a choice to be favored. Joseph enjoyed merited favor by maximizing his grace in prison the man goes to the palace and then he realized joseph merits this and then he remembered him and that is it yes sir you can go on and on and on in that aspect when you look at even back to the scripture in matthew 25 he said the rich man knew the ability he gave the money according to the ability of their people so when he gave five talents, the man that received five talents was favored. Because the man knew his ability. He might have expressed his ability. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He expressed his ability. So you can give gifts to people, and sometimes according to people's ability, that ability could be an ability of honor, an ability of respect, whatever it is you are looking for. It's amazing to know how Choices play with everything about life. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory I'm to really God. enjoying I am choice, in favor. Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory. Yes. Um, Bishop, the three Hebrew boy. Yes. They had a choice. Yes. Whether to bow or not to bow. Mm. And they made a choice. And they were cast into burning. Daniel, fire. Meshach, and Abednego. That's, that's yeah. It. That's it. And there are good choices. Yeah. But they did not know the outcome. Yeah. But the choice they made 
gave them merited favor. Yes. Hallelujah. You just said it. Yes. Wow. She just said it. She's this taking is, over this, the interview. Wow. <laughs> this, this, this. <laughs> I like that. So, so that means that there is yeah. there are favors that comes to you because you you had to work it because of what you did. Yes. That's right. What you did, it brought you favor. Don't leave favor to an open check. Sometimes, mm. sometimes what you do will bring you favor. That's right. There are people that will love you, not just because you're a man of God, because mm. of what you are doing, not just because you're a husband to your wife. What you are doing. Mm. If I can marry a wife and she won't favor you, if you can marry a husband, he will not favor you. So, favor is merited. Favor is merited. If you dishonor your wife, you will not merit his a favor. Mm. If you disrespect your husband, you will not merit his favor. <laughs> so there are triggers. Wow. Yes, that that is a choice you make, and once you make that choice, like the three Hebrew boys, like the four lepers, it's a choice. And what are we talking about? Everyday people are making choices. Bad choices. Good choices. Choices that bring money. Choices that bring people to poverty. Choices that bring sickness. Choices that bring health, healing, and life. Choices that push people to their early grave. Choices that unlock longevity. If you master the art of choice making, you'll be favored for long life. You'll be favored for wealth. You'll be favored for mind-blowing miracles. It's all about choices. And I think the Christians, the believers, we must wake up in the psychology of our civilization. We, like, there must be a wake-up call. We don't have to bury our lives behind prayer, behind Bible knowledge, behind sometimes it's a lazy way of serving God. Many Christians are lazy, sir. Mm. Like, they are very lazy. Super, super lazy. <laughs> is that, is that is the deliverance we have to begin to look for. Many Christians are lazy. Because their choice, there is a gap in their choice life. Yeah. It's, the world is full of many choices. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. There are things that may not move. But you can make a choice that will migrate your life. Oh my God. Yeah. Choice. The four lepers, they, they were bound. Mm. Battle, bound, battle striking. In Samaria, there was war. So, this leprosy, they are cursed by the, the culture of the civilization. They cannot be amongst people, but they have to make a choice. Why we sit here till we die? Why are we going to die here? We've been abandoned, ostracized, relegated to the background. We are good for nothing. There is war in the city, so we are even the last people to be thought of. All the charity workers have abandoned us. The philanthropists, they've abandoned us. Who are we? We are nobodies. So we have to make a choice. He said, if we sit here, we die. We move, we die. What do we do? Life. If you don't know what to do, go forward. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bishop, based on the choices that we made, we have to think that our choice sometimes not, does not necessarily mean it will affect you. Mm -hmm. Your choice can affect a nation. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Mm. So there are mm. things that we need to do mm. because earlier on in... What you said, you said mm -hmm. prayers. Yeah. You, ch you have to make the choice first. Yeah. And your prayers mm -hmm. is in fuel by yeah. the choice you yeah. made. So they are, could, let me use a nation. Yeah. A nation can, the leader of a particular nation yeah. can make bad choices. Yeah. And it actually affects the whole. There was a time David made a choice that released fury. Mm. He counted Israel. God never authorized him. And darkness hit the nation. People were dying. They died in their numbers until he called upon God and God restrained the angels. Hannah made a choice and the choice began to bet leaders and bet nations. Until Hannah, Israel wasn't a nation. Until Hannah, Israel wasn't a nation. It's Hannah's prayer. And she was specific. She made a choice. I need a male child. I need a son. 
Father, give me a son. He named the son Samuel. And the son became the first prophetic order that began to raise kings. It was the kings that turned Israel into kingdom. So Hannah is, how do I get it? She gives birth to nations. She, she is a builder of nations. Her decision, that is a choice she made. I want a son. I want a son. I want a son. Lord, give me a son. I'll give the son to you. The son will save you. She made all those choices. She signed the covenant spiritually. Not knowing that this man will be unleashing nations. He will be releasing kings for kingdoms. And that is how Israel, the first two kings of Israel, were birthed from the loins of Samuel. If he says you're a king, you're a king. He fires you, you're fired. Who is at the foundation of all this? Hannah. Choices. She mastered the art of choices. And what she says she would do, she did. Then she topped it with prayer. I call it me, she topped it with prayer. We, we live in the covenant of the New Testament. We carry something unusual than Hannah. We will not accept drought for the answer. We will not accept limitations for the answer. There is an ongoing renaissance, mighty move of rebirth, recreation, reprogramming. There is a mighty move of renovations. History has enjoyed, has enjoyed its victories. But destiny still has some victories to reward us with. Choices is the key. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go Choices. Mm. Choices. Isn't it amazing? Even Jesus Christ said, he chose, he said, I must work mm. the work mm. of he who was sent, sent me mm. before mm. the day. Come it. Come it, yeah. And in Philippians chapter 2, the Bible said he was in the form of God, but he chose, chose yeah. not to be like God, mm. but to be a servant. Amen. <laughs> and carry upon him the cross. That's correct. And die, you know, on the cross. And he said, because of that, God has given him a name. But he has to make a choice. Make a choice. He, he, the man had to make, Christ, as a son of man, he made a choice. Not, he said, I'm the son of God. I'm, I'm a father of one. But he came to a point where he did not count equality as God, equality with God for exemption from the cross. So sometimes you even know your power. But you have to make a choice consistent with destiny, not consistent with your power. Don't go around asking everybody, respect me. Really, this. No, 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 no. Leave that and make choices that will unlock and unleash your destiny. We are in trying moments in the body of Christ. We are in testing times in families, testing times in our journey. And we need to, you know, redraw back, sit back, and rearrange our battle plan. And we will need to master the skill of choices to be effective. It will be effective mothers, effective fathers, effective friends, effective churches, effective pastors. If effective everything we need to just remaster the art of choices hello sir Th thank you so much sir um I, I i'm just thinking about something uh, out of the six things that you spoke to us about yeah. um responsibility mm -hmm. they take responsibility too they know the consequences yeah now how do we connect the two? Do you just make any choice because you have to be responsible and sometimes... You don't make any choice. Everybody yes. will take responsibility. Okay. You will take responsibility for where you live. You will take responsibility of who you chose for your friend. Yeah? Yes. You will take responsibility for who you marry. You will take responsibility. Everything, like everything within this world will take responsibility. We will take responsibility. Mm. So... Once you know that, then you know there are consequences in, in this life. So, we also knew that the Bible is a blueprint of all the choices we make. So, the fact that it's your personal responsibility doesn't mean go out there, do anything because after, I will take responsibility if I die, I die. No, that's not what it is. The responsibility you are taking must come back to give glory to God. 
it must come back to give glory to God. So once that is in your mind, you will operate the blueprint of the word of God, the master plan, mm. the covenant plan, the word of God. You will be inspired, you will be you know, empowered, stirred up by that to make the choices that you um, make. And that is the responsibility you take that if I do what God's word says, I take responsibility for the blessings. If I don't, I take responsibility for the chaos. But I choose the blessing, make choice for the blessing, not for the chaos. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. So, um, relating this to Christianity yes, sir. as a church, yeah. when at what, what should be our responsibilities when it comes to I've chosen to become part of Restoration City Church? Yeah, Restoration City yeah. Church, um, any other church, when God graces you to be part of the covenant family of a church, know this, that you have to make choices. One, it's a choice you made to be part of the church. And moving on, what does God require of you? What biblically, what is expected of you? One, as a Christian, before a church member. Now, if you only see it as a church member, you fail. See first the priesthood responsibility, the royal priesthood assignment as a believer. Once you come to terms with that royal priesthood assignment, then you come down to the vision, the purpose of the church you are connected with. That is a tribesman's anointing. Issachar is different from Naphtali. That is different from um, um, Dan. It's different from Joseph, different from Reuben. It's different. So every tribesman have a culture, the traditions, but the same spirit of Christ that drives that vision. So in Restoration City Church, we are driven by the vision statement of providing total restoration, say with me, for total, total, total life. life. So everything we do is centered around the theme of restoration. Everything we do, our books, our songs, our prayers, our marriages, our families, our friendships, everything is centered around the theme of restoration. You can bet that when you connect with this covenant, it doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter how shredded, broken, torn apart you were. You, you will be restored. And it is total. Everybody wants that. They want total restoration. Total life. Divine life. Um, family life. Professional life. It's total. Every life, 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 life. Total. The only thing that's not part is lifeless. Everything is life. Okay. Lifeless. So, you... Become a covenant member of the church. The Bible studies, the teachings, the prayers, the word of God, our services, everything integrates around restoration. If you take time to listen to the teachings of this mountain, it's all about restoration. The theme is always huge in the teachings. Restoration, restoration. You, see, you hear it loud in all the teachings. Restoration, restoration, restoration. And that's the central theme of scripture. Mm -hmm. So any other church you are part of, you need to find out what is the vision driving this church. Once you are part of the church, then you have to also ask, what is my responsibility, right? There are choices you make based on the assignment given you. You don't have an open church to just make any choice. It's based on the assignment given you. Also based on the vision of the church or the ministry. It's beautiful. When you are consistent and when you can connect yourself and, and you know, just run through with the vision, you become productive, effective, and you bring glory to God, the vision begins to grow, and, you know, your, your prints are everywhere in the work. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. Earlier on, I asked a question, sir. Um, when you use, when you utilize the Holy Spirit, yeah, because it's there to help us, yeah, we will see the benefit. Mm -hmm. So the choices that we made daily 
in the body of Christ. We have to avail ourselves after making a choice. Mm -hmm. So we have, to, we have to avail ourselves to be used of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So in the body of Christ as Christian, we have to be available. Yes. Jesus Christ was available mm. for the Father to use him. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit was given unto us. Yeah. So we have to be available to be used of the Holy available, Spirit. Available, accessible, accessible, reachable. That's it, sir. You know, it goes on and on and on because you have to make that choice. Mm. Lord, here I am. I'm wholly available. If you can use anything, please use me. You give, I give myself away so that you can, can use me. It's, Lord, prepare me to be a holy sanctuary. Mm. So you, you, these things are all signs of choices people are making. And they can only express it in like, poems and lullabies and songs and, you know, worship and, you know, it, but it's, they, they are deeply seated on their heart. It's amazing. So, yes, that is true. You have to be available. And it's all availability is a choice. You can choose not to be available. Mm. Right? Accessibility is a choice. You can choose I'm not accessible. Reliability is a choice. Yes. You can make a choice. <laughs> I'm not reliable. So, you, 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 for vision to be driven, you must be available, accessible, reachable, and all of these predicate on choices. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you are a prolific uh, writer. Yes, sir. And I'm using some words I hear from you. Oh, prolific you are, author. Yes. Yes, sir. Also, you are a voracious reader. Yes, sir. And you've read, written. Yes, sir. And today, listening to you, you say something that I've come to understand now, that we don't just read books, but you use books. Yeah, I've, I've said it over and over. I've never heard it. You, you didn't hear me before, but I say it use a lot book. of times. Yes. Today, your spirit opened. My God. Yeah. My <laughs> spirit opened. Amen. That you use book. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so, at what point do I say, okay, this is the book for me I have to read? At every given point right now, yeah. In my study, I have a lot of books around mm. that I'm into it. I'm into it. So some I, I, some I carry around. Okay. Some I carry around. Um, there is one I'm carrying around now, and I'm into it. It's not Bible book. It's not scripture book. But that is my life. It's none of your business. <laughs> It seems you are in my head. I was just about to ask you, what book are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm reading something about the Stoics. Have you heard of the word the Stoics? Stoics, no. no okay, so we won't go there. Amen. It's, it's, it's um, ancient wisdom. And it's a wisdom of emperors, kings, and kingdoms, and authorities. And... Um, some people, you know, use that as something they read to comparably to scriptures, but it's not. The scriptures are of authority and authentic than all those things. But they are resources that can aid you in your everyday life and things you do. So it's just, you know, I, I, I read, I read. And so, uh, that is what I'm reading now. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Amen. And I'm sure you are reading your daily solution as well. Amen. Yes. <laughs> that one is, is you, you, that is my devotional. Yes. yes right. Sir. But you were asking of what, my daily solution, I don't read it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's you not, use it. It's okay. not, no, 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 no. It's All not right. just for reading. Okay. That one, I'm building my life with it. Amen. The Bible and all that. But I thought you were asking of what book am I like reading, reading now? Yes. So that is why I, you know, gave you that answer. Wow. Yes. This is very deep. Yes, sir. Viewers, I, I hope you are writing something down. Yes, and I, I hope you, and, and, and coming, you are inviting somebody and to. And coming yes, back, sir. sorry, to the issue of using books. Yes, sir. It's very, very sometimes you, you're dealing with things and you don't have time to read a whole book. But a chapter of a book is all you need mm. to handle a situation. So don't kill yourself and don't become too tradition. Don't read a whole book 
to get what you can get in one page of a book. Wow. So um, I can buy a book and just read, you know, one chapter and then I'll pack in the book and I'll read it later because now, now what I needed was a one chapter. <laughs> so that is how you use books. Wow. Then I can also buy a book for study and research purposes. So I read. Yeah. Wow. You will never, never lose because being a learner for life is a choice. It's a choice you make. And many Christians, we have a problem, are good at doing big things but lack what it takes to manage the future. Mm. The future is more important than today. The future is a mystery. The future is a mystery. Today is a gift. So people are busy with the gift and they are not unfolding the mystery. I love the mystery of the future. And I want to be part of the future, either in time or in immortality. Wow. It's a way you can mortalize your future. You are not here, you are gone but your footprint is on every wall. Jesus. Your face is everywhere. Your impact, your products, your resources, everywhere. Books in the shelves, repackaging, rebuilding lives. Marriages are strengthened. People are blessed. You are still talking to people. That is what we call immortalizing your life. Mm. Immortality, alive and alert, but men are dead. And go. Wow. It's a choice. I've made some huge choices. I'm going to follow through it and it's going to be awesome. This is just the beginning, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Viewers, very soon we'll be bringing this to an end, but I want you to invite everybody because where we get into is also very important. Black Bishop, years ago, I remember when I, I met you years ago. Yes, the sir. first book you were preaching. Mm. Anytime you are preaching and you mention the name of a book, I research and buy it. Okay. Not all of them. Okay. That book I remember is called The Empires of the Mind. Oh, Jesus. Yes, yes. And ah, it blessed my life so much. You got I, that book? Yes, I've got that book. Mm. Anyway, so mm. That's mm. years ago, about 15 or maybe 18 mm. years ago. By uh, yes. the Otis Waterley. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Mm. And I have seen you, you know, grow. I have seen you, you know, still, you know, birthing out different materials, blessing many lives. Yes, sir. And now we have something on the table right now, which, yeah. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know if they can put it on the screen for us. I don't think they have it. It yet. is beautiful. And it will be coming out very soon. Yeah. It's going to be a wonderful luncheon and then public um, you know, lectures as well. Yeah. It's going to bless many lives. And um, we just want you to take time and Do you tell have us the other one, this please. Yeah. The other one. Um, um, this is part of projected choices and things that God has ordained on my heart mm -hmm. to do. I've been around for some time. I've, I've not been around forever. And like you said, I've read so many books. I have um, asked many questions. And I realized that people are quiet in some areas of the kingdom of God. And so the best way people believe in doing is better. But sometimes to documenting is better. And when I met Apostle Paul in my encounters of destiny, he showed me so many things. I've had several visions, several encounters of destiny. And one of the encounters that has changed my life is Apostle Paul. He showed me many things and he showed me things and showed me things and showed me things. And that's for another time. And that is why I fashioned my ministry the way I've done it now. There are bigger issues that we can preach, but we can write about them. There are things, when I start preaching about them now, it will cause chaos. But I can write about them. There are books I will write in my lifetime to be published. I will say when it should be published. 
Aha. <laughs> when the time comes. Wow. There are books I've written that can only be for one person, not for two people. The power and the wisdom to, co to control what you have and not just do things is key. It's also a choice. So now the time has come. God wants me to begin these projects. And they are all the Golden Jubilee projects. So we started. And that is where we are at now. And this is just extra of the things we've been doing. So this one is volume one of 52 weeks of spiritual growth. Why? There is a big problem of spiritual growth issues in the body of Christ now. Big problem. Most of our church Bible studies and new believers class is not working. Christians are angry than ever before. Christians gossip. Christians like what we see from pastor to believer it's not Jesus Christ. If Paul was here, you he still ask, should I come with the cane? The problem is because we are raising a generation of Bible knowledge and we care less about spiritual knowledge. Spiritual growth is not done by Bible knowledge. Spiritual growth is done by spiritual knowledge. The letter kill it, the spirit give it life. If it's just Bible knowledge, you can go to Bible school, go to any institution, and, and you will just have Bible knowledge. But it's spiritual knowledge. That makes for spiritual growth. So we began to impact how you process spiritual knowledge beyond reading, how you process it. So that is what this will do. 52 weeks you'll be able to use this. Volume 1, a lot, they are all going to be spiritual knowledge materials. So it's a different kind. It's not just a book you read. It's massive. There are 52 things, very solid themes that will stir you up, that will impact you. And everything you read, you have to prove you understand. Because I realize most of the preaching we preach, we don't understand. <laughs> they are very far away. If you ask them, you'll be shocked. Most of the things people read in the Bible, they don't understand. People interpret the Bible according to their culture and their custom, according to what their father told them, according to what their mother taught them. We have to come back to the basics of scriptures. And so that is where we are going. Now, this book here, oh my God. This is volume one. And I will do about six of this. Minimum. So this is is daily restoration. This is the five days. This is solid. This has 931 prayers. Everything I do, there are prayers inside. 931 prayers. Every, everyone must have this. This is what pastors need to grow. You can build a big church and you have a small spirit. You can be a big pastor and yet you are not growing big. You can be a powerful preacher. Your spiritual growth is zero. Oratorship is not the same as spirituality. You can be a powerful prophet, but your profiting in spiritual growth is zero. Those of us that have the gift of design of spirit, we can tell the difference. You just have to preach for two minutes. I can tell if you're growing or not growing. We know. Those of us in the family of the Zen of Spirit, we know. You just preach. Just when you start, we can tell, ah, this one has to grow. Some people are very light in the spirit. Very, very light. Never, never, never relate your products with your spiritual growth. Never do that. Mm -mm -mm. Never. That's why we've seen people being teared down. Big in Hollywood, big here. The next time we realize we're in prison, where's the money? That man called Mr. Medoc. Made money. He was 
Ponzi schemes. Investing for people. Multi-billionaire. If you relate yourself with him that time, you will be fighting a wrong race. Before we knew, it was not wealth. They were deceiving people. He went to prison. He died later. So, our definition and the way we come across, the way we've done the whole thing, and how people are migrating, integrating in the kingdom, something is wrong, and we need to stay back and begin to watch it again. We've left spiritual growth. We've left it. So, this book here, this is just the first of its kind. If people like you stand with me and help me, we we'll produce minimum six of this. Amen. It's minimum six of this. And so, I'm excited. Hallelujah. This is all about the theme of restoration. Major covenant themes that people struggle with. I have taken time, practically, instructed people, simple, straightforward. Oh, glory be to God. Father, thank you for making me thank a part you, of this Lord move. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And what we are doing with all this is not just writing. We are modeling a path for this and coming generations. It's not enough to be building things. But we need to model. And the way you model things is through impartation of writing. And that's what we are doing. I'm glad to be part of this path of history's victory. Mm. That me too. We can, by the grace of God, produce scrolls and parchments. So these are no books. They are parchments. 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 Mm. Wow. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I'm, I'm, I, I, I must I'm, say, uh, I don't know about minister. I know minister will also talk about I must say, as a church and as, you know, a pastor in this church serving by the grace of God under your ministry, we are so privileged with Thank the you, things sir. that you teach us. I don't know how you get the time with the books that you write that blesses lives, changing lives. This place is not a church, Restoration City Church. This is a learning center. It's a learning center. It's a place of empowerment. It's a, a place, covenant. It's a covenant. It's a tyrannos. That's right. Of our generation. That's right. That's yes, right. it's an That's altar. Right. Yes, sir. This, this place is destiny. Flo, sir. The city of David. That's right. Hallelujah. The mountain of the Lord. Say it, sir. Say the it. Zion of destiny. Say it. I'm excited. My God. If you My leave God. me, I won't finish. My God. Wow. So this is the place. And, sir, we can't, I mean, finish thanking God for your life. Well, this is also a choice. That's right. I made a choice by the help of the Holy Ghost. My God. That we have to bet these things. Mm. We, not just me. Amen. Pastoring all of you and all the great people inspired me. You thought you brought your problems to me. You thought you had an issue, but you inspired me so that tomorrow I can put something in your hands. What looked like a problem? Now I have documented how you can handle it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. For all the online viewers and in our spheres, I just want to add quickly to some of the benefits that we are enjoying in Restoration City mm. Church. We have been well fed, wow. and I'm not talking physically. We have been fed spiritually right. because there's a spirit man in you, mm. and there's a spirit man in me, and it's needed to be fed. And in Restoration City Church, we learn the difference between feeding the body and feeding the spirit. Wow. Man. So I am encouraging you Come to Restoration City Church, visit us. We are more than welcome to receive you, to empower you, to give you the word of God, to give you a solution to every problem that you face. Because in God's word, there is answer, many answers to My all God. the problems God. we face in today's society. And it is an open opportunity. You are welcome to worship, fellowship, and be a covenant member in Restoration City Church. My God. As you can see, we have evidential food. We are fruits of the evidence yeah. of what God has been doing in our life through our bishop 
And as we avail ourselves as servants of the kingdom, we are growing together and we are building together. And we would not like to leave you behind. Come and join us. You're so welcome. This Amen. is powerful. Mm. And just to add to that, the days are gone when we just give people audience as pastors and enjoy the luxury and the pleasure or maybe the pain of dealing with problems or talking to people and, and you know, staying for long hours talking. The Lord gave me a mystery that we can't do that forever. So I should create solutions in parchments so that instead of spending all the time with you, I give you this. So you have a lifetime of, you know, a manual that you can open and also document the outcome of what the Holy Ghost has inspired in your heart. In it, it's all one. It's for you. You know what happens. Generations will come, your sons and daughters, your grandchildren, great, great grandchildren. One of the ways you maintain faith for generations is through parchments, scrolls. There must be something you document. When you have this, it will carry your DNA. Your DNA. This will carry your DNA. So generations come and this become one of the treasures they can't throw it away. That's why it's been done in a way that hardly will fire burn this. Yes, we've done something in a more very wonderful way. This is resistant. It's very powerful. So I'm excited. We are part of this uh, migration of spiritual revolution that is going to explode soon. Watch it and see. Watch it and see. Something's about to happen. Suddenly, Bible says in the last days, we shall go into scarcity of the word of God. Mm. So what I'm doing is, I'm filling the bank before the scarcity comes. Wow. And it's a choice. Wow. Thank you very wow. much. Wow. Thank you. So that means this book releases fire, but it resists fire. Yes. My God. Yes. You must get this. Book. Yeah. Man. Yes. Wow. Some people wow. need fire. Some must resist fire. You must resist fire. Yes. This fire to burn serious. for God. Mm -hmm. Then wow. there is fire that wants to kill you. Mm. So this 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 book is a carry wow. off. Yes. This sir. man is a man of vision. It's, it's Jesus. Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you Thank so you. much. Our virtual viewers, we are not leaving you out of this. Maybe you can't fly from wherever you are to become part of us. But there is a provision. We always think about all of you. We have our virtual uh, members as well. Take every detail that you see on the screen. And if you want to know how you can be connected to us, please make sure you take the details. Call us, send us a message, send us an email, and we'll reach out to you. And your life will never be the same again. Amen and amen. So soon we want to end here, and we are coming back um, again to be a blessing to your life. And once again, I want to say thank you so much, sir, for your time, for, for the words that keeps coming out of your mouth. And may God bless you, bless your family, bless the first lady, and everybody that, you know, um, um, is in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm glad for the privilege Amen. the Lord has given to me to be able to serve my generation. And it's ever my joy and I can't just finish thanking God for that opportunity and that privilege. And I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, viewers. So it's a choice to also give to the Lord. Giving is part of the choice. And this is an opportunity for somebody to also give your best offering to the Lord. Our virtual viewers, those who have not been giving their tithes, this is the time to give your best to the Lord and it will be a blessing. There are details on the screen. I want you to please take the details. And this is not the time to just, um, you know, um, go. But it's a time to give your best to the Lord. So please take the details. If you are here to give your best to the Lord, please take the details. And it will be a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If your offering is ready, I just want to pray for you. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that that seed in your hands in the name of Jesus 
will avert any negative choices the enemy has in made Jesus against your life. Man. I pray that that seed in your hands, this your offering, in the mighty name of Jesus, will terminate every power that the enemy has released through demonic offerings. In the mighty name of Jesus, your offering is blessed. Your sacrifice are sanctified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as you release it, I pray that the heavens above you shall be released and shall shall be open for your prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God richly bless you. Please give with joy. Give with joy. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, I just want to uh, uh, thank all of you for connecting. This coming Friday is going to be a serious time in the presence of God. And I want you to invite everybody. And those of us watching us from different parts of the world, the time has changed in the UK. So, now put this in, uh, in your diary that anytime we meet 7.30 on every Friday and then 10.30 on Sundays, it will be different times, but please connect. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe so that anytime we come online, you will be alerted. God richly bless you. I want to release a prayer over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ that this week God will give you the ability to make the right choices. Amen that will change destinies, that will change your life. I pray that this week in the name of Jesus Christ, that choices that people have made that is affecting you, choices that people have made, those that came before you, your fathers have made, and those choices affecting your life. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that by this revelation you have received from God, you shall master choices in Jesus' mighty name that will change the story in the name of Jesus Christ. This week I pray in Jesus' name that your life is blessed, your home is blessed. The heavens above you are open in the name of Jesus Christ. When you open your house, it will be full of choices that will bless many lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God richly bless you. This is Restoration City Church and it's a place that your life and your destiny will not be the same. Make a choice to visit us one of these Sundays. God richly bless you. Bye for now. Thanks for joining us online and watching our online services. Please do follow us on Facebook. Also like our videos. For more content from Bishop James Nanjo, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. So we look forward to seeing you online again and thank you so much for tuning in. online and watching our online services please do follow us on facebook also like our videos for more content from bishop james nanjo subscribe to our youtube channel and hit the notification bell so we look forward to seeing you online again and thank you so much for tuning in Thanks for joining us online and watching our online services. Please do follow us on Facebook. Also like our videos.